Welcome to the UCM Interface Bible Study Podcast. Isa itong Bible Study Podcast by Pinoy's for Pinoy's. Just uh, friends around the table, conversational lang, na uh, inductive, aka expository style. Hindi kami experts, most of us are young professionals, but we do our best to study context and let scripture speak for itself. We go book by book, but we also have special study topics once in a while. But before we start, salamat, thanks for joining us, and kung trip nyo tong ginagawa namin, please subscribe. And today we've got Ben, Christina, and Rainier, and Gooch. Hello, hello. Okay, so we're going to cover the letter of Paul of Paul to, to Philemon or Philemon. Yeah. Ano nga ba? Ano ba? Ano ba? Para... Nasanay na ako ng Philemon eh. Kasi alam mo naman ako galing ako ng America. Yeah, <laughs> wala. <laughs> Very Pero I kasi I'm not sure yung phi, yung, yung pronunciation of phi eh. I don't know. About it. Philemon. Philemon. Oh, so. Siguro. Si Philemon. Probably Philemon. It's a Greek yeah. naman. It's yeah. a Greek name. Right. Okay. So maybe kanya kanya lang tayo. Oh. Okay. I'm comfortable with Philemon. Eh. Ako Philemon. naman Philemon. Kasi uh, nga, eh. We're gonna do this coverage ng Philemon in two sessions. Sessions. The first one, which is this one, is going to be about is how this letter impacts society. Meron siya kasing macro level. Okay. Kasi kadalasan, pag tinignan natin yung Bible, tinitingnan natin lagi yung, how does, how does this apply, apply to me? Apply to me? Uh, uh, uh. Pero this time, hindi. <laughs> Makikita natin that this really has application for society. Right. Okay. And how Christians, because we have a public faith, can impact society. And the second session, pupunta na dyan sa medyo personal level. Okay. Okay. Personal? Personal, personal individual. Oh. Okay. Before we start, why don't we go through our reading? And Uh-oh. here we go. The letter of Paul to Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother. To Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker. Also, to Afia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier. And to the church that meets in your home. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers because I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Therefore, Although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, that I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I am sending him who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favor you do would not seem forced, but would be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as he would welcome me. If he has done any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back, not to mention that you owe me your very self. I do wish, brother, that I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I ask. And one thing more, prepare a guest room for me, because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings. And so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Why do we talk about yung background? Nung background letter. Background of the letter. First, I'm going to talk about the yung summary, right? Which is basically yung request ni Paul. Meron kasing slave na tumakbo. Pangalan ng slave na to ay si Onesimus. Oh, yung tagagawa ng paro. Oh, Philemon. Alam mo ba yun? Yung brand ng Onesimus. Okay. 
<laughs> so, Barong. Oh. Tumakbo siya after a certain crime. Pero possibly. Hindi, possibly a crime. It wasn't mentioned in the letter. Hindi siya mentioned. And then, somewhere along the way, got to meet Paul. Or maybe, it would be that he, he probably knew went, Paul already. Oh, he intentionally went to Paul because uh-huh. he knew Paul, the master, niya, uh-huh. si Philemon. In the process of their relationship, naging believer tong si Onesimus. Mm-hmm. And then, naging ministry helper ni Paul habang nakakulong siya. Habang nakakulong siya. Uh-huh. Diba? And then, uh, nag-request si Paul through this letter, uh-huh. sending it to Onesimus' master, who is si Philemon, requesting na tanggapin ulit ni Philemon si Onesimus, si Onesimus. sa household niya. Mm-hmm. Without punishment. Without the punishment required by the Roman law. Mm-hmm. Which is? Aba, bugbugin ah, ka kaya. Ah, kasi dahil tumaka siya. <laughs> Oo. Oh, oh. oh, pwede kang bugbugin. Okay. Uh, yeah, oh. Severe punishment. Tsaka, ang interesting thing dito is that kasi slave si Onesimus, di ba? And he ran away. Mm-hmm. That's a crime. That's a crime. Okay. And dangerous yung position niya kasi parang wala siyang rights that cover. Wala siyang wala. coverage wala of rights. Wala. Mm. Kaya pwede siyang i-abuse at walang, yeah. wala. Okay lang. Okay. Yeah. You could be beaten or killed. Yun lang mm. naman ang pupuntahan mo eh. Oo. Kasi crime yung maglayas. Yung nabasa ko is that uh, there are other stories daw na pagka merong slave na tumakas, sana hindi sila mahanap ng master nila. Tapos yung master, kakausapin yung parang tanod dun. Pakihanap na oh, yung... pakihanap. Uh, Mga informal yun na uh, arrangement. Pag nahanap yun, sigurado, gulpe yan. Or, bibigyan sila ng trabaho ng master nila na sobrang inhumane. Ilang taon, patay na sila. Isa pa rin dito sa letter ni Paul. This is the shortest letter of Paul. Yeah, one cha- uh, ang tawag natin dyan epistle, di ba? Yan, epistle. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Pero ito yung pinaka may exit. So only one chapter, 25 verses. Pero uh, nilagay nila to sa may parang bandang huli na ng Bible. Eh, no? Others are saying that probably it should have been placed before Colossians. Kasi this is, I mean, it Philemon happened is in, in Colossae. Oh, ang setting nito ay Colossae. There are nine names in the letter, nine names that were mentioned in the letter, that are also mentioned in the letter of Paul to the, the Colossians. Colossians. Yeah. Andun ang pangalan ni Onesimus, andun ang mm. pangalan ni Luke, andun ang pangalan ni Philemon. Mm. Okay. So maraming mga pangalan na nandun sa letter to Philemon, na nandun din sa letter to Colossians. And the fact that Philemon lives in Colossae, so talagang isang, mag, mag, kumbaga magkakamag-anak tong letters na to. Right. That makes right. sense. Uh-oh. Kasi may nabasa ako na si Onesimus was actually bringing the letter of Paul to the Colossian church. Mm. And at the same time, dahil papunta na rin siya doon, parang sinama tong letter to Philemon. And that being said, let me cover yung where and when. Sinulat ng sabay daw yung letter to the Colossians oh, at yung Philemon. Oh, oh. When Paul was in prison, around AD 58 to 60, pero may nagsabi din na AD 56. Oh, depende, depende na lang kung, kung saan. saan nga ba? <laughs> oh, oh. May, may theories saan kasi yan, dalawang theories. Man. Baka sinulat nito ni Paul nung napreso daw siya sa Ephesus. So that's like early 50s. 50, 50s eh kung 50s. doon naman siya sa Rome na preso, ano na yan, 60, 80, mga ganong petsa na yan. Uh-huh. And th- that was the last imprisonment. Hindi na nga siya nakalabas. Mm-hmm. Right. But I think it doesn't really matter kung saan. Yeah. Oh. Oh, pero maganda lang i-cover 56, 58, 60, mm-hmm. whatever. But just something that might be interesting for our listeners to know. Pero gusto kong later. rin balikan yung sitwasyon ni Paul because he was in prison. Yeah. Kasi kailangan maintindihan natin ano yung ibig sabihin nung imprisonment. Okay. Mm-hmm. During his time, Paul's time, at saka yung sa atin. Kasi sa atin, pag napreso ka, parang minsan yun na yung punishment. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Yes. Pag napreso ka, kasi may ginawa ka, kaya kukulong ka. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, may trial pa rin. Pero, yun na yung immediate punishment na yun. Sa kanila, hindi. Hindi yun ang punishment. Ano pala yun? Maghihintay ka lang dun sa totoong punishment mo. Okay. Oo, na pwede kang maghilutin o bitayin. That was the actual punishment. When you're in prison, they're still deciding how to punish you. Ang hassle yun ah. Oo. Oh, ah, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Oo. Oh, kaya nung nakakulong si Paul, hindi pa yun ang punishment sa kanya. Pinag-iisipan pa nila kung paano siya paparusahan. Saka sa dulo, pinugutan siya, di ba? Yeah, kasi ang Roman citizen, ang capital punishment, no? hindi pwedeng crucifixion. That's only for non-Roman citizens. Mm-hmm. Oh. Kaya si Jesus, okay. he was crucified. Hindi naman siya Roman citizen. Paul, as a Roman citizen, punishment sa kanya, yung guillotine. Mm-hmm. Pupugutan ka ng ulo because Obvious. it's so-called painless. So, walang torture. Walang torture. Unlike crucifixion, nakabilad ka pa sa araw, kakainin ka ng vultures, yung mga ganong tipo. So, that was actually seen as mercy na? Well, yes. 
Yun ang privilege of being a Roman citizen. Uh, pagka sinasabi ng tao, ah, gusto ko yung death ko parang painless. Uh-uh. Were you talking about the guillotine? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. And lastly, some interesting point lang. The story revolves around a slave. Eh. Mm-hmm. Ano ba tong slavery na to? Oo. Oh. Okay, so we can start. How do we go through this? Okay, ang gusto ko tingnan ulit natin yung buong kwento. Alamin natin kung sino muna yung major characters. There are really only three major characters here in the letter. So that would be Philemon. Okay. Onesimus. And? And Paul. Yan. Now, di ba, pag iba't ibang genre sa Bible, iba't iba din yung approach mm-hmm. sa pag-interpret. Kailangan isipin din natin yan. Right. Now, because uh-huh. this is a letter. Ang dami mong dapat alamin. Ano ba yung context ng letter? Ano ba yung occasion? Bakit sinulat ni Paul ito? So those are the things we need to identify. Ganito lang yan. Halimbawa, tayo nasa coffee shop tayo. Yung katabi nating table, grabe yung kwentuhan. Mm. We cannot help but listen to the conversation. Mm. Pero ang hirap intindihin ng conversation. Because we don't really know the context. We're really just eavesdropping. Mm-hmm. Ang pagbabasa ng epistle, parang ganun. Nakikichismis ka lang. Mm-hmm. Because you are not part of the conversation. Ang nagko-converse dito, si Paul, at saka si Philemon lang. Si Onesimus is not exactly part of the conversation, but he is the part topic. of the topic. Mm-hmm. Siya na yung pinag-uusapan eh. Dapat talaga tinawag natin tong podcast, Bible Chismas oh, Club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so iyon ang importante nating malaman. What is the conversation all about? Contextual meaning, parang ganun. Nung mga bagay na pinag-uusapan nila. Another thing that we also have to remember about this letter is that this letter is the only letter of Paul that does not mention the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm. Ah. Lahat, lahat ng letters niya, meron palagi, makulit yung si Paul eh, paulit-ulit yung death and resurrection, death and resurrection of Christ. Dito lang wala. Isipin natin yan din. Okay, just to help us understand Paul's way of thinking and how he conveys his message to his addressees. And again, we also have to remember, Scripture, although it's written for us, is not written to, to us. us. Mm-hmm. So we are not the original recipients of the letter. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we also have to keep that in mind. Ayun, balikan natin yung main characters. Alam na natin na kung anong tamang mindset when we're reading this. So we have Paul writing to Philemon about Onesimus. Onesimus. Uh-huh. Okay. Tingnan din natin kung ano yung relationships nilang tatlo. Paano nagkakilala muna si Paul at si Philemon? So it's most likely when Paul planted the church in Colossae. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So siya yung discipler nga ni Philemon. Philemon. He's the discipler, discipler. of Philemon. Mm-hmm. Right. Ano naman ang relationship ni Philemon kay Onesimus? Sino naman si Onesimus? Si Onesimus ay yung kanyang slave. Slave. And because Philemon has a slave, Malamang medyo mayaman siya. Yayamanin. Uh-uh. Okay. And the okay. fact that in this letter, hanapin nyo kung anong verse yan, alin dyan yung sinasabi that Philemon has a special role. Ano ba yung ginagawa ni Philemon to contribute to the church? Verse 6, I pray that your partnership with us in the faith Mm-hmm. may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the mm-hmm. sake of Christ. So okay. he could be a church worker or a... Sponsors or... Oh, yeah. So one way or the other, he is involved with the church. Church worker. Yes, and most likely, he hosts the church meetings. Yeah, because it's in yeah, the house. It's eh. so the first pa lang, oh, in your uh-huh. home, the church uh-huh. that meets in your oh, diba? home. So yung pa lang, it suggests that yung church gathering happens in his house. Mm. Kaya medyo alam na natin kung anong status ni Philemon. Alam natin din na a lot of the early Christians were poor. Pero itong katulad na Philemon, sila yung mga mayayaman na naging Kristiyano and they are using their resources, mm. you know, everything to support the church and to help it grow. Okay. And, and for the gospel, to spread. So maganda naman yung papel ni Philemon, di ba? Sa church, maganda naman siya. Mm-hmm. Right. But parang may conflict kasi, di ba? Between Philemon and Onesimus. Yeah. Ano bang sinasabi dyan sa letter? Ano muna yung conflict? I think it's verse 11. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and me. 18. 18, it says here, if he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge that to my account. Okay, so implied in that statement... Either nagnakaw ba siya? Or may ginawa siya and made a lot of damage or loss. Oh. Right. Yeah. It's not identified clearly. 
right? Hindi naman sinabi talaga ni Paul kung ano yun. Nung Pero manong, mukha yeah. talagang may ginawang masama itong si Onesimus. It's so bad that Onesimus thought, oh, the only thing I could do is just to run away. Kaya lang, anong problema sa pagiging runaway slave tulad ng nabanggit natin kanina? Ano Wala siyang yun? rights. Wala kang rights. And when you run away, that is considered a crime, crime. itself. Oh, oh. Criminal na pala tong si Onesimus. He's right. a fugitive. Meron siyang ginawang kasalanan at umiiwas siya dun sa punishment of what he committed. Sa lahat naman ng gagawin niya, but sana nagtago na lang siya, bakit kaya siya tumakbo kay Paul? Teka, paano niya nakilala si Paul? Siguro sa bahay ni Philemon. Yeah, oh. Oh. Kasi Paul was the one who planted the church there. Right. Nakilala na niya si Paul doon pa lang. Kilala na rin niya yung character ni Paul. Now, why would Onesimus run to Nakana- somebody naghanap, like Paul? Naghanap ng kakampi. Naghanap siya kaya ng kakampi. Isipin natin ganito. Kapag kayo may problema, kanino kayo tumatakbo? Someone you trust and feel comfortable with. Aha. Uh-huh. Kaya mga pagkakatiwalaan ko to, mm. pwede akong tumakbo sa kanya. Oo. Uh, Tsaka so nakita niya yung buhay ni Paul sa pagplant niya, di ba? I'm right. sure he stayed for a while there. Yes. So nakita niya yung day-in, day-out life ni Paul. Oo. Uh-huh. Kung sino to, talaga yung pagkatao ni Paul. Okay to ha. Okay tong tao na to ha. Meron di ba kayong mga ganong klaseng tao sa buhay niyo na, teka naman problema ako, kailangan kong kausapin na to. Meron di ba kayong mga ganon? Well, yes. hindi pa naman ako umaabot sa point na... Nag- nakaw. Oh, or like, kumabot <laughs> sa point na kailangan kong tumakbo oh, yung ganong yeah. klaseng problema. But Pero, when you're facing something big, I have some people na it's like, matatakbuhan. Mo. Matatakbuhan yeah. ko to. Ang ganda lang kasi for someone like Onesimus na walang status, mm-hmm. alam niya may matatakbuhan pa rin siya at hindi siya i-reject despite his kawalan niya ng status sa society. Yeah. He's not important at all mm-hmm. in Roman society. Diba? Slave ka lang naman. You're really just a property of someone. Even then, he had no fear or qualms about going to Paul. Kasi alam ko matutulungan ako nito. Ngayon, how did Paul try to resolve the issue? Anong, ngayang, anong approach na gusto niyang gawin? What is his ultimate goal? Ah, yung, yung 15, 16. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but better than a slave. As a dear brother. No longer as a slave. But better. But, but better, better than a slave. But as a dear brother. Anong gusto niyang palabasin? That Onesimus is your equal. Is basically family na. No longer as a slave. Mm-hmm. Tinatanggal na niya yung... Okay. Societal ranking. Oo, yeah. tinatanggal na yun. Hierarchy. At ang gusto niyang gawin ngayon, Makapantay. sila ni Philemon are of equal status. status. Not just of equal status, of family. Family. Mm-hmm. Kasi yung next pala na verse nun is that he is very dear to me but even dearer to you both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. Anong radical kaya dito sa gustong paggawa ni Paul? What is so radical about it? Something like, nagkaroon na nga ng kasalanan sa'yo, tatanggapin mo ulit, at hindi lang tatanggapin ulit, I-elevate i-elevate mo pa, mo pa yung status mm, niya. Not just to be equal, but also to be family. Tingnan natin tong isang sinabi rin ni Paul in one of his letters. Read Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. It says here, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free. There is no female and no male. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay. Tingnan niyo yung ginawa niyang pairings. Ano-ano ulit yung pairings na to? Neither Jew nor Greek. Jew nor Greek. Neither slave nor free. Male neither nor neither female. female. Tingnan niyo. Jew nor Greek. Ano yung classification niyan? Citizen versus outsider. Or pwede ring ethnic identity. Mm. National identity. Yeah. Mm. Race. Race, yeah. Considering na laging meron silang away. Wala na palang ganun. Uh-uh. Multiracial, multicultural. Diba? Binubura. Binubura yan. Not that you're going to lose your ethnic identity. You can't. You won't. But in terms of value, in terms of worth, wala na yun. Uh-uh. Pantay, okay. pantay, pantay. Pantay, pantay. Ano yung sumunod? Slave nor free. Slave nor free. This talks about... Social, social status. status. Social or economic, economic. status. Economic status. Even. Status. Grabe, no? And to think this is first century... Oh, Whether you're rich or you're poor. 
you're all the same. And then, of course, ang pinaka-sensitive, like, even now, mm-hmm. male nor female. Now, may mga nabasa ako dati na, well, although, kinakwestiyon ng iba whether it's true or not, pero nagandahan ako, kaya maniniwala na lang ako. <laughs> <laughs> may nagsabi kasi that this was part of the cycle of prayers of Jewish men. Yung formula ng prayer na yan is, you know, they pray this in the morning when they get up and then they say, Oh, Jehovah, I praise you because you made me a Jew mm. and not a Gentile, that I am a free man and not a slave, that I am a man and not a woman. Mm. Yeah, I've read that as well, yeah. Right. Supposedly, Paul also recited this prayer as a Jewish male. So this was part of his routine. But when he became a Christian, he realized that this is no longer true because we are all one in Christ. But using the same formula of the prayer, he redeemed it, changed its content, and gave it a Christian message of equality. So it's very, very radical. We will compare this letter of Paul to another ancient letter. And this is the letter of Pliny the Younger to Sabinianus. Marami kasing similarities itong letter na to dun sa letter ni Paul kay Philemon. So before anything else, sino ba si Pliny? Okay, si Pliny the Younger ay isang Roman senator. Naging consul na rin siya. He was a lawyer, politician, a senior civil servant. Bigat now, we ito, have, ah. Oo, oh, oh, bigat siya. <laughs> Iba siya kay Pliny the Elder. Elder. Kasi itong Pliny the Elder, yung uncle niya, ay isang philosopher naman. Okay. To our uh, listeners, if you are listening on YouTube, we will put this on screen. The letter para you have reference. The letter of Pliny to Sabinianus. You told me you had been angry with a freedman of yours, and now he's come to see me. He threw himself at my feet and clung on to me as though I were you. He wept a lot. He asked for a lot. Though he kept quiet about a lot, too. To sum it up, he made me believe that he was genuinely sorry. I think he is a changed character because he really does feel that he did wrong. Yes, I know you are angry and I know, too, that you have a right to be angry. But mercy earns most praise when anger is fully justified. Once you loved this fellow, and I hope you will love him again, for the moment, it's enough if you let yourself be placated. You can always be angry again if he deserves it. And you'll have all the more reason if you've been placated now. He's young, he's in tears, and you have a kind heart. Make all that count. Don't torture him. And don't torture yourself either. Anger is always torture for a soft heart like yours. <laughs> yes. The way you said it. Eh? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. It's <laughs> ah, so like Hallmark. Eh, no? <laughs> a greeting card. Uh, uh, I am afraid it will look as though I'm putting pressure on you, not simply making a request. If I join my prayers to his, but I'm going to do it anyway, and all the more fully and thoroughly because I've given him a sharp and severe talking to, and I've warned him clearly that I won't make such a request again. This was because he needed a good fright, and I said it to him rather than to you because it's just possible that I shall make another request and receive it too always supposing it's an appropriate thing for me to ask and for you to grant. Yan. Game. Okay, napansin niyo ba na may similarities yung letter ni Pliny to Sabinianus sa letter ni Paul kay Philemon? Yeah, merong tatlong tao din. Okay. May master at merong, dito hindi nga slave, freedman to. Freedman eh, pa nga eh. Mm. Ano nga ba ang freedman? Ano sila yung mga dating slaves? Ngayon, let's say, nabayaran nila yung utang nila o nabili na nila yung whatever Freedom, is the uh, price of the slavery. Now you're considered a freedman. Pero minsan, yung mga freedman na yan, hindi pa rin makakuha ng trabaho. Baho, bumabalik sila dun sa slave owners nila. Okay. Mm. Well, they get paid, pero kumbaga, babarating ka talaga. Ah, so may sweldo mo. na sila Meron, time, but it's ganun. not sufficient. And it's mainly for the sake of a shelter. Somewhere oh, to, oh, to, yeah, may to stay home. Lang. It really is just for survival. Mm. Hindi aangat ang buhay mo. And then, itong Friedman na to, may kasalanan siyang ginawa dito kay Sabinianos eh. Tapos, tumakbo siya kay Pliny. Kay Pliny, the younger. Oo, oh, oh, to uh, ask for I mercy. I think it's remorse for oh. what he's done. So sumulat si Pliny kay Sabinianos the same way that Paul wrote to Philemon. Okay. Meron din kasing konting kaibahan eh. Actually, hindi lang naman konti. Medyo malaki yata ang kaibahan. Alamin natin, what are the primary concerns of Pliny in addressing the issue? Kaya nabasa dun sa anger is always torture uh-oh. for a soft heart like yours eh. Yung matindi. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> 
from the looks of it, yung concern ni Pliny is not really about the freed man. It's about yung high blood ni okay. Sabinianos na huwag uh, ka na magalit. Uh-huh. Like, masasaktan ka lang eh. Diba? Uh-huh. Anger leads to the dark side eh. Mm-hmm. Diba? Gusto ko yung sinabi niya yung mercy earns most praise when anger is fully justified. You know? Parang Sige, magalit ka lang. Magalit ka. Mas pero, maraming mercy. Oo. Tsaka, Uh-oh. mas may praise yung mercy mo. <laughs> cool. Dahil talagang justified yung anger uh, mo. Uh-oh. Tama naman na galit na galit ka eh. Pero, kung nagpakabait ka na lang, you become merciful. Ay, nako. Pogi ka. Oo. <laughs> you earn pogi points. So, the concern of Pliny here is more the welfare of maybe emotional welfare, psychological welfare uh-huh. of Sabinianus. Mm-hmm. Unlike Paul, may disruption na gustong mangyari si Paul eh. Paul is asking Philemon to take Onesimus back as your equal. Dito sa letter ni Pliny, kay Sabinianos, meron bang ganun? Yeah. May disruption ba ng social status? Wala. 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 You just stay where you are. Status quo tayo. Ang importante, wag ka lang magalit because that is for your own good. Ito nyo na ibang-iba ang worldview ni Paul kaysa kay Pliny. And the difference is because Paul has a Christian worldview. Mm-hmm. Kaya nga kung babalikan natin ulit yung Galatians 3.28 that there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave, slave nor free, free, male nor female. female. Ito yung isang tanong. Bakit ba itong si Paul? Why didn't he call for the abolition of slavery? Yun. Di ba? Oh, Kasi tanong. may mga nagsabi nun na talaga namang pro-slavery ang Bible. Tingnan niyo si Paul. Hindi naman niya sinabing i-abolish ang slavery. Bakit kaya hindi na lang niya tinawag lahat ng mga house churches sa iba't ibang city at sabihin nila na pumunta sila lahat sa Rome, may mga dalang placards, ibagsak ang slavery, ganyan-ganyan. Bakit wala silang ginawang ganun? What would happen if all the slaves suddenly were granted freedom? If everybody got freedom, walang societal structure to support them with choices. The slaves, Opportunities. Yeah, so, wala. From slave to unemployed mm. to nothing, wala. Wala silang... Wala kang pupuntahan, wala kang trabaho, wala kang kakainin. So, there is no structure in place to provide protection, provision right. Right. for slaves mm. or freed slaves. Yeah. Wala. Mas lalaki pa tuloy yung problema. Kanina nga share about yung freedman, di ba? Siya nga, slave, nabayaran niya utang niya, tapos bumalik din siya sa slave master niya. Doon pa rin siya nagtatrabaho, sa slave master niya. At sabi nga dun sa mga documents sa first century about slavery, mahirap pa rin yung condition ng mga freedmen who went back to their slave masters to work. Hirap pa din sila. So they're really like slaves. Parang wala pa rin nabago sa status nila. Mm. Pina- Sinesweldohan ka, pero but even your wages are very meager. Hindi ka aangat. Hindi ka yayaman dito sa pagiging freedman mo. And very, very few freedmen actually made it. Kaunti lang sila. They are more the exception than the rule. Mm. So can you imagine if Paul and the early Christians all asked for the abolition, for the abolition of slavery? Ano mangyayari? Mas bibigat pa ang problema. You will never escape poverty uh, and enslavement. Okay. So, ito, isa pang tanong natin. So, masasagot ba natin yung kasi minsan sasabihin nila na, well, Paul's silence on slavery means he's justifying the practice of it. Anong tingin nyo doon? After all, isn't slavery practice in the Old Testament? But the rules for slavery in the Old Testament is very different from okay. the Roman regulations. Mm-hmm. Tsaka parang yung how slavery is used in the Old Testament was sort of like an employee. Yeah, and they, the slaves had a lot of rights oh. in the Old mm-hmm. Testament. Oh. Like, you can't abuse a slave oh, in the way you want. the seventh year, pwede ka nang lumaya if you choose to. Yeah. So, iba. In fact, minsan siguro pag-aralan natin yan kasi iba rin yung translation sa English, the word slave. The rendering in English is slave, but it has a different Context. connotation oh. in the original language. In Hebrew. Might be an interesting study oh, for medyo, the future, no? Mm-hmm. Oh, pero sa ngayon, ito bang silence ni Paul about the issue means that he is justifying its practice. So not necessarily. Kasi nga, kita nga natin, sinabi niya dun sa letter niya sa Galatians. There's neither mm-hmm. Jew nor Greek, yeah. slave nor free, male nor mm-hmm. female. Na he emphasized that we are all equals. Actually, yung sa akin, yung nakikita ko dito, just from verse 8, first he says, I can actually force you to do what I want you to do, but I'm appealing to you in the basis of love. Ganun. So and the motivation is... The motivation is love. 
Christ-like love. And then, appealing to Philemon to take him back in love as a brother. Okay. So, ngayon, pagbalik niya, hindi siya slave. Hindi na. Oh. Although, he never called for the abolition of slavery, iba yung ginagawa ni Paul dito. Kung baga, naglagay siya ng time bomb. Nilagay niya yung time bomb dito sa napaka-wicked na institution na ito ng slavery. Sasabog at sasabog ka rin sa tamang panahon. Kasi nga, matututo na ang tao because of the spread of the gospel, people will learn about the value of human beings. Darating na rin tayo sa panahong yun. Uh-uh. Kaya nilagyan niya na ng time bomb itong institution na to. Kasi nga, hindi pa ito yung tamang panahon para altogether destroy it. Kasi kawawa rin yung mga slaves na makakawala, wala rin namang ikabubuhay. Even society was not ready for it. Mm. Maski nga yung mga reformers nung first century, these are pagan reformers in Roman society. Hindi nga nila magalaw yung issue na yan eh, because they know the repercussions. Mm. Uh-huh. Mas deadly pa. So naglagay na nga si Paul ng time bomb to make sure that later on in the future when things are ready papapsabugin na talaga absolutely itong slavery okay so i think the practice of the early christians will also demonstrate how they as a community of faith understood the purpose of Paul, like in Galatians 3.28. Alam nyo ba noon, yung mga early Christians, nagre sila ng pera to buy the freedom of slaves. Binibili nila yung mga slaves para makalaya sila. Paunti-unti nilang ginagawa. That's how the time bomb works. Until, nagkaroon na ng isang napakalaking event noon sa England dahil kay William Wilberforce. San ba siya kinilala itong si William Wilberforce? The abolition of slavery. Right. Pero after so many attempts, palaging yung pinapasa niyang law, nare-reject. Alam ko, parang bumbuhin yung inaayos yun eh. Mm-hmm. Wait, kailan to? Si Wilberforce lived 1759 to 1833. And I know that when he gave his life to Christ, that was one of the things that he was convicted. Right, kasi yung mentor niya, what ang about? may influence sa kanya. Si John Newton, who was a slave trader, became a Christian. Si Amazing Grace? He wrote Amazing Grace. Ah, wow. Yun yung kwento ng buhay niya. So, itong naging malaking influence kay William Wilberforce. Ah, okay. Kaya, ang sabi nga niya ni William Wilberforce noon, ayoko na, gusto ko yatang maging full-time Christian worker na din. Sabi ni Newton, no, nasa politics ka, dyan ka. At ipaglaban mo na nga yung issue na to about slavery. At mm. yun na nga, yun ang tinapad niya. But it took so many years before finally the law was passed at nung nagawa na nga itong resolution, namatay naman siya. <laughs> Kung baga, hinintay lang niyang malabas yung resolution at na, saka siya namatay. Ito yung ginawa ni Paul. Ito yung gusto niya mangyari. There's a disruption no, of the social mm-hmm. hierarchy. He was preaching the gospel but the content of that message also means changes in society. Ano ang impact nito sa atin ngayon? We have the gospel. Is the gospel simply a way to escape hell? Is this just a ticket to heaven? The gospel is not just to save us for the sake of escaping hell, but it also transforms lives. You know, it gives us new joy. It's not just to prevent us from something that's terrible. Aside from that, it also adds something more. Mm-hmm. A bigger joy, a bigger... It gives something more beautiful, far and above, what not just escaping something mm-hmm. bad. I think yeah. from the prayer that Jesus taught, your kingdom come. come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm-hmm. And I think what that means is that when the gospel is inside our hearts, it transforms not just us, but also our relationships with other people. Mm-hmm. And also seeing that uh, there is darkness in the world and the light, I have it. I have this light. Mm-hmm. I'm not supposed to hide it under a bush. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a it's the chapter yeah. five. Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to illuminate that mm-hmm. dark place in society. And that could be... I mean, slavery is still real mm-hmm. now, diba? But there's also a lot of other things, the societal injustice that's around. Kahit nga yung simpleng pagtrato sa mga tao who work for us, yung mga empleyado, kasambahay, driver, daming injustice that happens kahit sa ganong setup. Pero sa mata ng Diyos, we are all equal. So ang sinasabi mo, Gooch, we all have to have a kingdom mindset. Because having a kingdom mindset means this is all about who is truly reigning in heaven and on earth. So, ang gusto mo sabihin na ang issue dito is we want the kingdom to advance. So, this is not just about, okay, mabait na ako ngayon kasi hindi na ako marunong mag-chismis 
Uh, hindi na rin ako nagda-drugs ngayon eh. Uh-huh. Oh, hindi na ako nanonood ng porn. So, mabait na ako, period. I can go to heaven. So, that is not enough. Transformation means it's not just internal, e- internal but your faith really becomes public. And sometimes, there are issues that minsan mahirap ayusin agad. Mm-hmm. Ang importante, maglagay na tayo ng mga time bomb dyan. And we use the gospel as the time bomb to destroy all these structures that are oppressing people. Mahirap nga, halimbawa dito sa Philippines eh. No? Kaya ang dami nag abroad kasi walang makuhang trabaho, nahihirapan sila. And then you hear people saying, kung masipag ka lang dito sa Pilipinas. Yayaman ka. Yayaman ka. But that is not true. That is a very simplistic view of poverty. Because you also have to deal with structural evils in society that are oppressing all of us. At ito yung dapat lagyan na ng mga time bomb. Mm-hmm. And our, really, our only weapon is the gospel. Because you can legislate. Ang bawa, na-legislate na nga yung o bawal ng slavery, ah. Pero na-solve pa rin ba ito? Can merely legislating morality change society? Naikot-ikutan yan, eh. Kasi hanggat hindi nagbabago yung... Yung puso. Yung puso ng tao, pare-pareho pa rin yan. Mm. Kaya nga, ang sabi ni Paul, take him as a brother, no longer as a slave. It all begins with that. And you can't have that kind of relationship if, first of all, you don't have a relationship with Christ. That's true. And as we end, let's end with the words of Jesus in red in Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. I love it now. Dito, we are the salt of the earth. And guy, if we do not do our part, we say we give our life to Christ and yet do not become salt in the world. We are better off as road material to be trampled by men underfoot. The light that has been given to us by Christ is not just for us. It's for others. It's for the transformation of the world. Amen. Yeah, and that is the first part. This one is talking about yung societal um, impact. impact of it. In the next one, it's going to be more personal. The personal reflection more on the letter of Paul to Philemon. Okay, hope to see you guys on the next episode. And we hope that you guys got to learn something from this one. See ya. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. See ya.